Hi, everyone. My name is Rose. Uh, I'm a PhD student at Stanford's Computer Science Department. And today what I wanted to do was just walk you through how you can build your own Tutor Copilot. Uh, so what is Tutor Copilot? Um, we recently released uh, this study here uh, on the effectiveness of this human AI system uh, where uh, the system, Tutor Copilot, is designed to be a thought partner in live interactions, like in tutoring interactions. Um, and so in this collab, what um, you're going to be learning is how to build your own mock-up of Tutor Copilot that will look something like this. Um, the nice thing is that suggestions you're seeing from Tutor Copilot uh, are going to be contextualized to the ongoing conversation. Um, and the other thing is that these suggestions are quite bite-sized for you to either directly use in your uh, conversation um, or to be able to easily adapt. So everything that I'll be describing here in this collab and in this video can all be found in our paper in uh, section three where we're describing how the system's built. Um, with that, let's just get started. Uh, so our starting point is going to be here, where um, really what we're going to be doing uh, in this tutorial is being able to populate this uh, template prompt. Um, and so this template prompt will, um, it's curated from our previous work where, where we were working with experienced math teachers and figuring out how they respond to struggling students. So what this prompt assumes is that it takes in really important context information, such as the ongoing lesson topic that this interaction is about, um, as well as uh, your uh, conversation history, um, and also the strategy that you would like to use uh, in this conversation. So with that, let's first get started on populating this template with the conversation history here. When we are working with uh, real world conversations, um, what typically happens is that these conversations can contain a lot of identifiable information about the user, such as uh, the tutor and the student name. So what we'd like to do is be able to strip out those names. Um, and the way we're gonna do this is just uh, by using uh, this EduConvo Kit uh, library that I've already installed above. So after I've installed this, let's say that I really want to uh, strip out the names that are present in this uh, conversation I'm showing you here. So this is a conversation between uh, Charles and Robbie. So what we're going to do now is that we want to ideally be able to mask out both the uh, username as well as the uh, names that appear in these text utterances. So typically what will happen in the real world is that we'll have a roster or a database of uh, users or identities. So in this case, we know a priori that Charles is the tutor and uh, the student's name is Robbie. Uh, so in order to now de-identify their names uh, in this data frame, we can use uh, EduConvo Kit to be able to uh, do that for us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna define this uh, de-identification function, which says, okay, I want you to de-identify the user column and replace the names accordingly with uh, tutor and student. But I also want to de-identify the text column. And in this case, I'm just going to mask the tutor and student name with these uh, brackets. So let's just define that function here and run it and we're gonna pass in our original data frame and pass in our known names uh, and just run that de-identification function. Um, and now what you can see is that we'll get this data frame here where the user has the corresponding identities of the speakers, so tutor and student separation. Um, and now in the text, what we'll have is we'll have the appropriate names masked out as well. The nice thing about EduConvo Kit is that it preserves names that are part of the problem content. So for instance, here, um, Bob and Alice are not names of our tutors or students, but rather they're part of the problem statement that the tutor is going through. Once we're able to de-identify the names, we can then just go on and properly format the conversation. In this case, I've just formatted the conversation this way with new lines um, and uh, speaker utterance uh, pairs like this. Now that we've gone through the conversation parts, we can uh, try to uh, turn to picking a strategy for the model to generate a response with. 
So in our work, what we do is uh, we are going to be using strategies that uh, experienced math teachers used from our previous uh, work. And what's nice is that we've hosted all the strategies um, in this existing file here. And so I can just uh, download that file and then show you the strategies that uh, teachers commonly use when trying to help struggling students. What we can now do is we can pick any of these strategies and instruct the model to generate a response that follows these strategies. So let's just go ahead and directly do that by uh, populating that template I had shown before, not only with the uh, conversation history, but also uh, with the strategy in this case. So let me just run that and show what this will look like. So before we had this um, empty uh, template with these placeholders for the lesson topic and the strategy and the conversation history. But now after, what we'll see is we'll have the strategy that we've picked out. So this is about explain the concept. Uh, what we'll also see is the de-identified conversation history. And for now, we'll, we just passed in this uh, dummy placeholder of a lesson topic. So working on uh, word problems. Great. So now what we have is a completely filled out template, which we can uh, now use our model to uh, prompt um, I've added some instructions uh, to uh, run uh, the OpenAI API model. So in our case, um, what we do in Tutor Copilot is that uh, we use GPT-4 to generate uh, the responses. So for this demo, I'm also going to do the same thing. Uh, great. So we can now go down. Um, I've installed the OpenAI library here. Um, and what I'm going to do is just define set my API key uh, and then uh, generates my responses by passing in that prompt uh, or the filled out template I previewed before. And here's just print out the instructions I'm passing into the model that it'll try to now generate um, or respond to. So now when I uh, run this function, um, I'm going to get the model's response. So here the model wants to respond with, that's a good try, but when we subtract the number of apples Bob gives uh, to Alice, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this is following the instruction of uh, trying to explain the concept to the student. Great. So now this is kind of given you one pass through of what it means to be able to pull the context, de-identify the context, and then instruct the model to follow strategies that ex experts would use in any case in these conversations. So now what we can do is now populate that tutor copilot uh, panel based off of what we know. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to just be using the first three strategies from our previous work. And those strategies are explain a concept, ask a question and provide a hint. Uh, and now what we're going to do is we're just going to iterate through these strategies and then uh, populate the templates that we had worked through before to be able to get our prompt. Now with that prompt, I can uh, pass it to the model to generate a response. And I'm just gonna track all of my responses in this list here. So when I just run this, um, I'll go through each of the strategies and we can render our panel and we'll see that, great. So these are the different uh, responses uh, that are coming from the model, follow these different strategies, um, and that's contextualized to the conversation that we had seen before. Um, so great. Um, that kind of gives you a full pass through of how uh, under the hood Tutor Copilot's, uh, at least its basics, uh, work. Um, for fun, I added some additional materials where uh, I'm using the data set from our bridge work um, to uh, run uh, Tutor Copilot on uh, a few other conversation contexts. So um, here what's happening is that I've downloaded the test set of our data and uh, I'm reading uh, this test set and I want to just display some examples uh, from our data set. So these are from real world uh, tutoring conversations um, where uh, what's nice is that this data set already has each of the lesson topics for the conversation. So this uh, conversation is about two and 3D shapes. Um, and the snippet of the conversation has both my uh, user speaker identities as well as the text here. Um, 
So now what we can do is actually just put together what we've just learned about creating uh, these tutor co-pilot suggestions uh, for each of these conversations in um, my data sets. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try it on three different uh, conversation snippets and then see what we get. So let me just run this here. And we'll start to see uh, now the tutor co-pilot panel being populated for each of these conversation contexts. So in this case, for instance, on two to 3D shapes, um, if we wanna get an explanation, uh, we'll see the corresponding explanation here from the response. Or if we wanna provide a hint, we'll also see the suggestion uh, popul uh, uh, populated here. Um, and then we can also go to the next example. So this is about finding unit rates and then correspondingly, uh, the suggestions generated under each of these strategies here. So uh, that gives you kind of the complete uh, overview of how Tutor Copilot works. Of course, there's a bunch of other things that um, I've excluded. So if you want to kind of learn more about uh, the Tutor Copilot paper, feel free to check out those links. Um, the language model and adaptation approach I mentioned before is our paper on bridge. And so we have the data as well as some methods descriptions um, in these links. And finally, we also use EduConvoKit, which is a really nice uh, library for handling and analyzing uh, conversations that happen in education. So feel free to check that out as well. Yeah, thank you so much and have fun with Tutor Copilot.